Welcome aboard, everybody. Welcome to Chapter 3 of 7th C, 2nd Edition, presented by Rook and Rass. Um, we are playing 2nd Edition, which is by Chaosium, or uh, uh, printed by Chaosium. And uh, we uh, are not affiliated with them, but uh, we just enjoy the game because it's super fun. It's pirates. I mean, whatever. <laughs> this episode is called Paths Adrift. And uh, before we go ahead and go back to our heroes who are in a little bit of a predicament right now, um, we will introduce everybody. Um, my name is Danny, and I am the storyteller, the GM. Um, I, I run this game, but I do not control it. That is what I always say. <laughs> you know, um, that's just how it is. Uh, so that's me. And uh, go ahead, Alla, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us who you're playing. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Alla, and I am playing Ninette Primvert, who is, um, ooh, yeah, she's from Montaigne, and she's dealing with some issues. All right. Uh, <laughs> Michael, how about you? Hello, I am Michael Tipton, and I am playing Andreas Carraris. Uh, a swordsman, uh, a duelist, and sorcerer from the Sar Sarmatian Empire, or Sarmatian Commonwealth, not Empire. That was in the past. We don't talk about that. Um, <laughs> who uh, has a bit of a friend uh, and is currently dealing with that as well. I've got friends on the other side. <laughs> um, and Roxy, how about you introduce yourself and your character? Hello, my name is Roxanne Thompson, and I play Amelia McJansen, a sailor from the Highland Marches, uh, daughter of a Vessen, worked on a Vessen ship, and promptly sunk that Vessen ship into the water. <laughs> and John, how about yourself? Hi, everyone. I am uh, John, and I play G uh, sorry, Gianni Messina, and uh, he is a Vedachi rogue. Yes. He's currently querying quite a bit <laughs> on his person. Right now. <laughs> they just end up there. He doesn't know how. He just attracts these things. <laughs> Better in his it. pocket than at the bottom of the sea. <laughs> true. True, true, true. All right. So um, before I get started, are there any announcements of things or anything I forgot to mention at this point? Rocky or John? Roxy or John? Uh, we do not have any other games this week on the channel. This is a light week, so uh, just be prepared to come back on Sunday for more Illuminated Page. Although it's not Horror on the Orient Express this week, it's going to be a special little one-shot called The Ooh. Deadlight. Ooh. Ooh. I read it, and so every time I hear Deadlight, it's like... All right, anyway. Right? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, awesome, awesome. So... When last we left, um, our four heroes had, um, well, there, there was quite an intense and, and, and sordid battle. Uh, a pirate ship, the Whisper, had attacked the Utrecht, and Captain, who is only known as Silent Death, had uh, demanded that they return an item that was on the Utrecht, our, our, some of our members had gotten a look at what this thing was, and they all felt its pull. And uh, it ended up that uh, both ships ended up uh, getting overwhelmed. Somehow, I mean, the, the other ship got on fire. I mean, we, we, you know, all of a sudden they turn around and it's on fire. How did that happen? We're not quite sh sure, <clears throat> Gianni, how that happened. <laughs> Uh, but the other ship, as a matter of fact, um, after this this interesting bracer the captain was wearing got shot, uh, the mast had fallen on the Utrecht, causing the ship um, to split just enough that water started coming in and sinking the ship. And the captain decided that he um, needed to get people on the, on the long boats and the silent uh, Captain Silent Death went into the water. His interpreter followed him. And so the other pirates decided uh, to try to save their transportation and made their way over there. And so 
while they were doing that, everyone else was trying to make their way um, to the to uh, the long boats, the lifeboats, um, but not before grabbing important things such as the the cabin boys, Pip and Squeak, super important. Um, uh, your the uh, their trunk, which is also super important. My trunk was very important. Yes, and some items from both captains' quarters. I can't imagine who would do such thing. <laughs> you guys got trunks? <laughs> yeah, I just had a bag. <laughs> Which is and, uh, now going down. And the uh, Nanette had put the, um, you know, piece of piece, the bracer or the, the object of interest over the side. But um, the magic pull, I mean, they saw it floating, floating by them on the water and calling to each of them in various ways. And uh, Andreas pulled it out of the water. Uh, interesting. By the way, I did not tell them to do that. They're choosing to do that. They could have just let it float. If they That's right. Do. Yeah. But we'll, uh. see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what that decision. We shall see. Uh, and we shall see how that what the decision entails. So uh, let's begin. We zoom in on our leather-tooled book, our on the on the table, worn. Maybe even looks a little wet this time. You know, some water droplets on the leather and and everything like that. With our four symbols, you know, the sorte deck, sorte cards spread out, the Sarmatian sword the um blunderbuss and the veil and it opens and in beautiful uh script it says chapter three plans has adrift and we see a black and white photo of a of a long boat out on the water with some figures sitting in this in this boat and it below the picture it says and he could go on in life, existing from day to day, without connection and without hope, for he did not know what to do with himself. D.H. Lawrence. The picture, we zoom in on this black and white picture of this boat with figures on top of it. And it starts to move and we start to smell the sea and fire. Uh, we smell smoke. Uh, on upon the air and the water and the waves and we hear wood hitting against wood as pieces of, of detritus are kind of uh, floating uh, in the water and we see our heroes uh, in a boat with two young cabin people <laughs> Pip and Squeak and a Charles Exeter in one boat two other long boats um are can be seen um on either side of you um amelia you ace you know that uh that's probably about half of the members of the crew the rest probably uh either were killed by pirates or uh managed uh to go down with the ship somehow you're not quite sure, but you see, you know, you can account in the looking around in the other boats. You can account for about half of the crew. Uh, you do see the first mate in one of the other long boats, Keg. I am mostly keeping a wary eye. I'm, I'm looking around at the other lifeboats, and I'm glad to see that some of the other crew did manage to get away. Um, very glad, in fact. Um, but I'm also questioning allegiances <laughs> a little bit after the events of last time. Uh, when one of the captain's most trusted crewmen and, uh, someone who'd become quite a friend to me as he shared a name with my father, uh, proved to be a bit of a traitor. Uh, and, uh, but I'm also very i'm keeping a very wary eye on charles exeter based on what was said to me by was it gunner that said that the captain said that it was the captain that said it okay yeah um yeah so i'm also keeping a wary eye on exeter as he as we ride along 
Um, yeah. So mm-hmm. I'm I'm very quiet, but I'm keeping an eye on things. All right, uh, Gianni. How is Gianni handling things? Uh, if the you know if the storm has subsided, uh, for the most part, you know I I think up until then he's pretty much just hanging on to the boat. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's you feel a little safer when the boat is larger. But once you're on this little smaller skiff or whatever, uh, it's it's a whole another game. And at that point, he probably held on for quite a while, didn't do much of anything. And then finally uh, is now starting to take stock of whatever it is he's made it away with. All right. Yeah. I will come back to you. <laughs> um, Andreas, what are you doing? You pulled this box out of the water. Andreas is currently like looking like he's got the box and he probably put it like on the on the floor on the the, the gunnel of the, the the boat like between his feet mm-hmm. and is probably helping with the rowing because even though that pirate ship is on fire uh we still need to get away from it <laughs> right right okay so you set it so, down and you are going to be helping to row. Yeah, just it, it seems like the practical choice at this point. Um, and uh, he will help where he can in that, because I don't think he's good for navigating or anything else. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you see your Davis is across from you. You see his form across from you. And he leans down uh, very close to the box on the floor. Um, and, and he cannot, uh, he's not touching it or anything, but he seems very, uh, interested in it. Just, uh, it, it, just extra sighing in, like, with the, <laughs> more mm-hmm. sighing than usual with the rowing. <laughs> All right. Uh, and Nanette, uh, you have, uh, Charles is sitting next to you, by the way, Andreas, uh, he is looking uh, mournfully out into the sea where all of his things were purportedly. <laughs> um, he has not, he's not spoken. Uh, he had, once he was in the boat and y'all were in the water, his protest sort of died down and now he has not said a word, but uh, he, is, he is next to you. And uh, Nanette, you are, when you have Pip and Squeak with you, and uh, they're just kind of looking around. Um, they're kind of, you know, huddled close to you. And um, yeah. So does anybody, I will uh, leave you this. So if anybody wants to uh, do anything in particular before I get back to Gianni. I, I would, or Nanette would like to um, saddle up to Amelia. Mm-hmm. And just uh, on the pretense of, checking for injuries her own injuries have been hastily um bandaged probably by herself um but she's like oh you made it every what's going to happen now uh oh well um yep yep we made it uh as far as what's gonna happen now we're gonna look for the nearest uh nearest land if i remember correctly from which way we were going before the whisper beset us i think i can i think between myself and likely keg we can at least get to land uh hopefully soon audible Uh, question mark yeah yeah um i mean you know you were about like 12 hours out um if you would like to uh do kind of a sailing role. Um, you can go ahead and um, try to figure out. Character sheets are useful. Just one second. Um, the <laughs> that sort of looks back. She's like, huh, Montaigne is that way. The way. And she points to the exact location of Montaigne, probably the exact location of Shrews, where they came from. <laughs> oh. Nice. Um, the, yeah. But- but I don't know where we're going now. Well, I say we continue on to Castillo, uh, as where we were headed, uh, or thereabouts. 
So I, I figure that's where we're going to continue to go. We have nothing waiting for us in Shuru's, and I thought that you were rather excited but, to no, leave that no, area. No, don't get me wrong. I am 100% ready to leave. I just, I know it's there, and I know we want to get away from that direction. So that's... Sure, sure. Opposite direction is great. Also, and she leans really close, almost uncomfortably so. We have to get rid of the box. <laughs> Did we not get rid of the box? It's it's here. It's <gasps> it's here. The man in red has it, and his friend. He had me search through your things, but I got rid of it. <laughs> and I just switched oh. to British for some weird reason, but it. Oh, that's fine. Right. <laughs> that's gonna happen a lot. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I do it too. <laughs> no, uh, I take this. I I I don't show any. Any, I'm pretty stony faced. I'd like to say, um, I take it in in stride, and but my eye, that wary eye that I was keeping on Charles Exeter, is now also taking in the uh, some Martian Commonwealthian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, this is now Martian. I'm questioning. Yeah. Yes, Sarmatian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, you're not wounded, are you? Uh, I. I don't that might not so. be your blood. I just I didn't want to make any assumptions. I appreciate. No, um not my blood. Not my blood. I uh some of those some of those hits with the pistol were quite close at range and splash, blowback, those kinds of things. But uh thank you for this information. You went through my things and found it? I did not uh... keep I didn't that was not a place where I expected anyone to like rifle, be honest. <laughs> Well, uh, it wasn't my f first place to look, but... Well, that's something. Well, it could so the box that you brought up was... Yes. Oh, we never saw her bring up the box. I'm the one who faked it, right? Right. You just yes. knew it wasn't there. I was wondering who took it. Uh, I tried to I make a... I threw it overboard. Well... Just like you did. Well, you know. Clearly before I did, I guess, right? <laughs> no worries. That's where it belonged. It, I <laughs> agree. I did not see him bring it aboard. Uh, we will have to keep an eye on them both. But this, for now, if you don't mind, stays between you and I. Wonderful. Um, you wanted me to roll a wits sailing? Is that what you wanted me to yeah, roll? Yeah, go ahead okay. and do uh, wits and sailing. Um... I'll see how many raises you get. The more raises you get, the more information you're going to get about where y'all are at and what how bad the situation is in terms of distance and time. Okay, cool. I actually don't have anything special about this, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah. Okay, one second. Right. You're basically trying to, to navigate and try to figure out uh, where you are. The skulls on these dies, they're the ones, right? Yeah. Okay, just one second. So I got one tin. And I can re-roll a single die. Let's mm -hmm. see here. I got Yeah, give me a second. I'm still I'm sick brain adding, so <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's an adventure. Math. <laughs> Let me re roll this one. All right. Almost useful, but not quite. So I have two left over, three raises. Okay. Three raises. Okay. So you generally, um, there is, amongst the things y'all gather, there is a compass, uh, you know, uh, available for you to use. I mean, that seems pretty, you know, people were grabbing whatever supplies. So among the stuff you have on your boat, would be a compass to help you along. You can pretty much guess, you know, or, or you know, Castile is that way. It would have taken you on the Utrecht about six more hours to reach the edge of Castile. You were, you, you know, if Montaigne's here, Castile's over here. And I carry There's like the one. a big bay <laughs> in between them. You've sailed 12 hours. Um, on the Utrecht, it would have taken you about another five or six hours to get to uh, the, the 
western side of Castile. You all were actually headed towards Puerto de Ser, which is where you had been before and actually came aboard the Utrecht. Yes, um, I remember Puerto de Ser. Which is on the other side, the eastern side of Castile, which is much longer. Um, so you were kind of headed not the closest distance, but in the end, you guess with the little boats that you have, if you don't have any weather, it would probably take you about nine, maybe ten hours to reach land somewhere on the western side of Castile. Okay. Okay. Um, I would probably go ahead and divulge that to some degree. I'd be like, well, uh, and, and not as quietly. I'd be like, well, I think if, if my figurin's right, uh... And I'll be able to do, maybe do a little bit of a cross comparison uh, when we draw closer to the other boat. Uh, we might be nine hours from Western Castile, uh, at the rate we're going. So it depends on how fast we oar, and we're all quite. It was quite an ordeal. I don't expect us to be able to row through the night on all three boats. It is uh, at noontime. So, you know, okay. you at we least do have, have some time. That. Yeah. Okay. Because the attack came at dawn. And that's right. So, I apologize. Yeah. I forgot. No, that's okay. That's what I'm here for. Um, so it is about, you know, noontime or so, you know, so you do have a bit of daylight. Um, okay. Before you have to worry about rowing in the dark. Okay. Well, that's good. We have about two days worth of supplies. I did an inventory while we were putting everything in the boats. Yeah. That Between the three is boats. very useful. Yeah. Oh. All right. So let me get to Gianni. <laughs> so while y'all are having this conver little conversation, Gianni is pulling things out of her shirt, your pants. <laughs> where is he? Where is Gianni shoved these these papers and objects that he has taken? Honestly, probably anywhere that uh, they could be protected from water. So, uh, probably in a pack, probably in a jacket pocket somewhere, okay. uh, just anywhere. So, well, you definitely, start... you have the cross that you, uh, paid your, uh, fare with. You have a couple of diamond earrings as well that you were able to find. Um, you also have an, a couple, uh, a nice couple, nice daggers that you were able to grab um, you know, they're not incredibly bejeweled, but they're nice, sturdy, utilitarian daggers if you needed them. Um, as far as papers go, you uh, start looking through, and they are in Vodachi, which is easy enough for you to read. Uh, like, what am I getting? Um, but you did suspect, I mean, he was dressed very Vodachi, so it's probably not too much of a surprise. Um that uh, one is a, a, a few of the pages. Most of what you grabbed um, that was on the desk was just inventory, just just um, things that they had on the ship, um, data, manifest, stuff like that. The two most interesting things in the papers, and and anybody in the boat would, how are, how are you pulling these things out? Like, are you trying to be cagey, or are you just sort of like you know dumping dumping your stuff there in the boat? How are you? Uh... Uh, I'm probably like. Mm -hmm. and, I and I just, you know, move from one pocket to the next. I'm not really trying to hide anything. If I act, I think if I acted like I was trying to hide something, it'd be much more obvious. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I am probably just, you know, I, I reach in. Uh, I probably pull my pants forward and reach down in it and pull out a new wad of papers. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's like, oh. Who knew? You know, things like that. And uh, I'll probably talk to myself while I'm going through them. Okay. So. Um, the two most interesting pieces of paper that you have, one looks like a map um, of, of, of the area. Well, of southern uh, Thea. It's kind of Montaigne, Castile, Vodachi, um, and surrounding, surrounding southern oceans below those. Um, go ahead and do, uh, wits and 
Which is higher for Gianni? Notice or scholarship? Does he have any scholarship? Both are non-existent. Oh, okay. Um, does he have any ceiling at all? Oh, no. No, no. I mean, it, it would all just be a matter of wits. I mean, okay. he's, uh, yeah. All he's right, so just roll straight up wits. Uh, you're going to need uh, two raises for this uh, particular thing. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I'm going to take a picture of this. Not that, you know, I'll, I'll, and I will post it to our Discord. <laughs> but uh, I just rolled a 10, a 10, and a 9. Wow. Nicely done. Okay. Nicely done. So you've seen enough maps in your travels of acquiring different things, and you're pretty skilled at knowing whether a map is valuable or not, I would assume. You know, it's like, is this something going to be useful to me? There is something about this map. It, it has so much empty space, it seems. Uh, it's it's you know you have all of this stuff up here and then and then the 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 water um so that's the first thing you notice um, you notice and the second thing you notice with your second raise is that you um it, it looks like not like a professional type map it looks relatively like accurate but it looks like somebody who probably wasn't used to making maps but it but it had uh, tried to do so um, relatively, you know, as as accurately as they could. So with your third, so those are the two easiest things uh, to really to really notice. I'll give you an opportunity, two opportunities, and you can choose with your last race. Okay. I can give you either the origin of the the map and and the ink or i can tell you about how wide of an area it covers i think i would actually want to know the uh origin i think that would be more along the lines of something that you know he'd be he could probably do something with Mm -hmm. Okay, so the paper is, it's, the the third thing you notice is the paper definitely comes from Fadachi, and it's the type that really the nobility of Odachi would have used. You'd seen it enough times hanging around your family that it's, it's this type of paper that, uh, you know, uh, nobles of Odachi would use, as well as the ink. So not only is, is the map in Vodachi, but it also looks like it had its origin in Vodachi as well as the ink. And you all, of course, see him uh, pulling th things out and pulling them away and all of that um, sort of thing. I kind of uh, do a double take. And I'm, where, have you been keeping all that on you this entire time? Oh, no, I, I, I raided the, uh, the captain's quarters of the other ship while I was over there. You were gone that long, and during that firefight, I, I had, I didn't see you even leave, or come back, or either. You know, it was, it was quite an adventure. Uh, I actually, I think I... Let's see, I, I swung over once, was bored, swung over back, swung back over again. That's when I, yeah, that's when I went down below and went to the captain's quarters. I just grabbed what was on the top of the desk and then walked away with it. All right, uh, you, <laughs> hmm, and I go silent again, but I'm now watching all of them because if <laughs> the only person that is seem to be on the right page seems to be Ninette. <laughs> I, I tried to talk him out of the battle and, and uh, he did not seem interested and uh, I w when I uh, was walking through the bottom that's when I threw the, uh, the the brandy with the torch on top of the cannon right okay it, okay. it worked didn't it 
I I am not I'm not uh, complaining nor judging. I just I am, I am as you just, were. I am just an actor. I cannot I, I fighting is not my gift. Now you put the sword in my hand, I can pretend to be a fighter. But there is a difference. There's a big difference. Uh, I do agree. I am quite the same with a sword, if we have to be honest. I think, uh, unless Ninette has got another hidden talent, I'm going to say that uh, our other friend in the red, he's the one that uh, has got the sword gifts. Andreas. Uh, per perhaps... Correct, pardon me. No, it's fine. Perhaps... Perhaps I should uh, introduce myself. I am I am uh, Gianni Messina. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, well, I am Amelia. I uh, was the crew's kind of gopher, but I did a lot of scouting. I do remember you coming on the ship in quite a fanfare. You saying now that you're an actor makes a lot of sense. And uh, the lady and gentleman here? Uh, Andreas uh, Kraris, a member of the Duelist Guild. Oh, uh, I'm Ninette. Just Ninette. <laughs> She's like Cher. Just, just Ninette. <laughs> well, it it is a uh, it's a privilege to uh, meet all of you. Mm -hmm. Um. The second paper that you pulled out, Gianni, that was of interest. So I'll come back to that now. Um, it looks to be some sort of journal entry done by, uh, you have to guess, probably Silent Death. Um, you know, a lot of times captains, you know, they write a page and try to, you know, with loose and try to, you know, and keep them together in a kind of log or journal or whatever. And you think he might have been working on this since you took it all from the desk. Um, it basically starts out saying uh, that he is looking for the bracer and he thinks he has found it. He calls it Tempest Brazer. Tempest Brazer. Bracer. Bracer. And uh, he says he thinks he has found uh, where it's going to be. And uh, then it kind of cuts off. Like he was interrupted. A, uh, hmm. I, 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 I was paying attention when he pulled the box out of the water, right? Or whatever. Yeah. I mean, any of you probably could have seen him do it. The boat's not that big. But at the same time, I have not seen what is in the box. No. Uh, but you definitely recognize it as the one that was in the captain's quarters that you could not open at the time. Interesting. I wonder if this is an old letter. It uh, it details uh, the other captain saying that he had found a bracer that was called the Tempest Bracer. And uh, I think he was wearing it. Isn't that what made all the lightning? Hmm. Oh. Uh, well, I mean, perhaps, yeah. Perhaps. And I and I look at Ninette very pointedly. <laughs> well, either way. And then I look at Andreas when he's not looking. I'm like. <laughs> well, you just. I mean, uh, Andreas, did you take any pains to like hide the box when you pulled it out of the water? I did not. Uh, as far as Andreas knows, it's a relatively useful box. Uh, my, well, my, uh, that my Davis is completely obsessed with. So not knowing what's inside is, uh, is bringing Andreas a little bit of joy because it means his Davis is not, also does not know what's inside. And the longer he goes without opening it, the longer my, my Davis is just like, <laughs> does the date. I just as this is a question for Michael. Does the Davis react when Gianni mentions Tempest Bracer? 
I do not know. Uh, does this? He doesn't seem to. Um, if you had to guess, he seems more attracted to, you know, like the magic or the energy coming from it uh, than anything else. Mm. He tends to do that sometimes. They tend to do that sometimes. Mm. Um, something has a particular aura or uh, death about it or anything like that. He, he beco uh, they become very interested. So, Capitan, uh, about how far you think we are from uh, the uh, from getting someplace better than this? Oh, well, as I said a minute ago, and by the way, I uh, chain of command would fall on uh, keg, and I will point out across at one of the other boats and the barrel of a of a man that I assume is is uh, kind of directing the rowers on that boat uh, right. that is moved, pulled ahead of us quite a bit, probably. Because we're, Andreas is, is rowing, but I think, I don't know if the rest of us are doing much else, but be like, huh. But, um, huh? Uh, we're just going hopefully, in circles. <laughs> hopefully Pip and Squeak are helping out. They're probably helping out. Uh, for I, every, I am every acting day. like I'm rowing. Well, Okay. <laughs> Ninet watches and delegates. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, uh, but I, technically he is the captain, but I can at least, of this vessel for the time being, give us some guidance, I suppose. Um, we're probably about nine hours out from the western side of Castile. Hopefully that is where you wanted to go. Uh, that is where we were bound. It gets me a little closer to where I want to go. Hmm. So, if you... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, if you picked up all that stuff from the other captain's cabin, why, how am I not supposed to assume that you also picked up a number of items from my captain's cabin? And if you did, I say that it's probably good for you to go ahead and drop them from your pockets as well, sir. And I... I I uh, pull the hammer back on my pistol. Oh. Actor, no. I, uh, I can't have you being stealing things from my captain. Am I technically in between Ace and Gianni? Technically, everyone's well, between us, I think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've got Andreas kind of the, the oars are in the middle. So if Andreas is kind of doing this by himself... He's kind of in the middle. Um, Nanette was probably, I, I'm guessing she might have gone somewhere in the back with Pip and Squeak before moving to where uh, Ace was. Um, where would Ace have chosen to be in the boat? Like front? I, I am probably closer to the back and directing the oars from behind. Okay. If that makes sense. And uh, where would Gianni have uh, sat? Probably uh, net if if uh, anyone else is rowing, probably next to them. Uh, he would actually st do some rowing. Uh, he would not just sit there because at the in the end of the day, he wants to get someplace. Yeah. Well, uh, well. In any case, at this point, it does look like you were kind of in between that Andreas. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm a real good shot, Red. You just keep rowing. I have I have zero doubt, but I don't know if it's currently the time to uh, to to be uh, to be throwing things. It's not as though he can go anywhere. Well, I agree. I just I need uh, Mr. Messina to understand that that is not acceptable behavior on a boat. If you want to steal from the enemy, I guess so be it. But those pirates that besieged our ship—that's all they do too. So, are you a pirate, Mr. Messina, or are you just acting like one because you thought you were in Rome? No, I understand two things. My enemy does not deserve my respect, so I took from him. And secondly, what reason do you have to think that I would take from your captain? I don't know who your enemies are, good sir. Any, any man who points a gun at me is usually my enemy. Are you my enemy too? Perhaps. Let's see how that plays out. I think right. you ought to be doing a little bit more rowing and a little less talking if you want to get anywhere before 
midnight. Sounds like a beautiful idea. <laughs> and I Would it be un... possible to make some empathy rolls to see if he's lying? Sure. Absolutely. Why That's not? something that Nanette could absolutely do. So let's go ahead and do uh, wits and uh, empathy. I do uh, think that uh, the, the question would be uh, lying about what, though? About having taken things from the... Because uh, Gianni did I rather say I evaded didn't? that fairly well. Mm -hmm. And the Montaigne evade questions on a regular basis. <laughs> so for Gianni, since she's trying to discern him, let's do wit and um, convince for you. All right. So that's uh, four raises for me with one left over. Same here. <laughs> uh, okay. All righty. Okay. So, um, how many? How many do you have in uh, empathy, Nanette? Three. And how many do you have in Convince, Gianni? Oh, Three. Okay. We are evenly matched, sir. Yeah. <laughs> so, so how this plays out is, is you both kind of, you know, it's sort of like you recognize each other as a player, at least a little bit, as somebody who, you know, like, Gianni, you kind of think you may not have completely snowed Jeanette. Yeah, and then it, and then that you suspect he may not be, but you're not. Neither of you are certain about that, but you suspect those things. Game respects game. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. I didn't know we when, had two fellow duelists. <laughs> when I, when I tell him that he needs to do more rowing and less talking, I will uh, release the hammer on the pistol and and put it back in its holster at my side. Um, but uh, feeling that I made my point. Mm -hmm. Perhaps so, you'd like a song, Gazairo. I ignore that. <laughs> but maybe oh, okay. everyone else will. <laughs> she ignores that. Uh, of course, anybody can, you know, if they're like, yeah, play a song. Um, <laughs> could certainly do so. Um, if they wanted to. But it doesn't seem like anybody's uh, chomping at the bit, Gianni. <laughs> a pity. A pity. <laughs> Different circumstances, perhaps, but... Yeah. So, at this point, it's kind of come to sort of a, a tense little silence in the boat. And all of a sudden, like, like whipping head around Charles Exeter says wait and of course he is not wearing his glasses he has lost them <laughs> somewhere on the boat he says wait wait did somebody say Tempest Bracer like he's just catching up to, to what's been going on well, 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 yes, sir. I, I, I believe it was on the uh, the wrist of the other captain who is now unfortunately in the bottom of the ocean. Yes, yes, but where did you hear that name? Well, it was on this piece of paper. And I'll, I'll, I'll pull it out because as far as my character is concerned, it's probably worthless because he thinks that Captain Death already found it. Okay. Uh, Charles will take it from you. And he kind of holds it like this, because he can't. Oh. <laughs> He's like... He's both nearsighted and farsighted. <laughs> he can see nothing. Yes. Yeah, His like... glasses were really pre prescription, like, bifocals. Well, <laughs> yeah, they're, like, that thick. <laughs> He's like, I can barely read any of it. Perhaps yes, you want yes. me to read it is, is in Vadachi. I, I, I can read Rodachi, I, uh, but but I can't make it. Could you read it for me? Certainly. And I'll read it out loud. 
Okay. Um, yeah, you read it. And he says, no, oh, he had heard. Uh, I would like to say that as my character is reading it, he probably puts it on the oar in front of him and is rowing and uh, reading it at the same time so that he <laughs> he's saying it and it's kind of, you know, taking on a little bit of a uh, a cadence with the motion of the boat. <sighs> yeah, trust us. so he did f find out what it was, but how? While that is going on, is there any way that I could call over either Ninette or Pip or Squeak? And I am going to ask them if they can surreptitiously, without really being noticed, uh, get the box back. Well, you are on a very small uh, boat. That, that will be a, a very difficult prospect. <laughs> Probably not something you can easily do from sure. the boat. Well, I'm not going to do it. I'm asking someone else to do it. <laughs> But, uh, you know, while, while Andreas is, is rowing and Gianni is singing and rowing and Charles is blindly listening, uh, perhaps, uh, you know, uh, you know what, can I, can I spend a hero point to, uh, create an opportunity for one of those three to snatch up the box? Sure. I, I will say I will say that uh, uh, you can do that. Sure. Um, um. Perhaps we hit a wave. The water comes up a little high. The front end of the boat comes mm -hmm. up over that wave, and the box kind of slides backward a bit. <laughs> okay. So so Pip now has the box. Uh, you were able to you know you kind of signaled the Pip you know like with the eyes like get that. You know, and so Pip we have an unspoken language, to... me and the cabin, the cabin tots. Yeah. Yes. And, and he sort of kind of goes over there and then kind of waits for his moment and then uh, 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 grabs it and, uh, and then sidles up next to you. Um, I might be distracted, but I have, but there's two of me technically. Right. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Well, um, go ahead and do wits and notice. Sure, I will do wits and notice. What'd you get? I got four ones. Oh no! <laughs> I mean, he's really distracted. A seven <laughs> and a four, so I got one raise out of all of that, which is which is probably not enough to overcome the uh, opportunity. But, <laughs> but, but I was just amazed to see all the ones popped up. Wow! Yeah, I mean, so you're, you're just the... uh, rolling, rowing along. Um, <laughs> rowing I was about to along. say, is this like the one system where that is not necessarily a bad thing? I mean, it's not great. Well, it's it's just you don't really um, have like oh I botched it or I failed. It's only if you know if you can't spend a raise, you just don't do what you said you were gonna do. Uh, yeah. yeah, unless so, he uh, unless he purposely decides to say I fail. No, and... I rolled, so I can't I can't call yeah, the fail. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I have to, yeah, so uh, no, but I'm more than happy to say I got one raise, and probably is not enough to overcome the opportunity. <laughs> I right. probably just noticed my David like going. And I'm just like, <laughs> I don't have time for your shit right now, Dave. That is exactly <laughs> probably what's going on. Yeah. Um. So Charles Exeter, muttering to himself, and then he says, "I might as well share with you all." because of the situation that we were in. I am a, members, a member of the Explorers Guild, but I am also a member of the Invisible College, and my mission here on the Utrecht was as a member of the Invisible College. 
Now, how you can each decide for your character, like, how much they might know about, like, the Vatican Church and the Explorer Society. Um, I, I, I know I don't like the Vatican Church, and I am intimately familiar with the Inquisition. Not, right. like, directly, but I know all about what they do. So you would have heard rumors that there was some sort of um, group that was trying to fight against the Vatican Church, getting rid of uh, magical artifacts or certain artifacts. So the group was trying to get rid of... The artifacts, the, or the they Vatican, were trying to save the artifacts. The Vatican Church was trying to get rid of the artifacts, gotcha. the magic artifacts. This uh, group is trying to preserve them, save them, study them. Oh, then I am. Then my character, then, then Andres is definitely like he may not openly say it unless he has to, but he's like, yes, good for them. Right. Um. So, uh, does anybody else think they might be familiar, uh, with these terms? Um, I might be, but I'd have to roll for it just from well, traveling. May have run into some people. Charles doesn't mind uh, explaining if he sees any, uh, you know, like. Sure, what? sure. Well, I'm his certain eyes. And, and he goes to push his glasses up, realizes he doesn't have them. <sighs> And size. The Vatican Church. I assume you're all familiar with the Vatican Church. And of course, the Vatican Church is very in uh, Montaigne and Vodaci, very big there. It's basically the Catholic Church. So everyone would have heard of them. Just think of them as the Catholic Church. The Vatican Church has recently started destroying Sirnith artifacts. Sirnith are the people that populated Thea before our civilizations did, and they left many things behind, many things that we don't understand, and many things that can do all sorts of things. We don't know them all yet, we haven't found them all yet, but we want to study them. But the Vatican Church has decided that they are an offense to the prophet, and a lot of things are offense to the prophet. Mm. And they have they sought them really out. Like short day either. <laughs> yeah. He says many, many feel that way. Including myself, which is why I am a member of the Invisible College. And I'm sharing this with you in hopes that you are all people who will not sabotage our mission are trying to preserve these artifacts. We are trying to bring them to safe places where they can be studied and we can find out exactly what they do and maybe how they can benefit us. I know I told Mr. Karas here that I was going to study the sword masters that he was looking for on Labuka. If you're not familiar with Labuka, it is a, a island where Many, many pirates and many uh, uh, deals are done, and it was probably the safest place to make our exchange. I was actually sent to make sure that this artifact got there. It is the mate to the one that Captain Silent Death wears. It was recently discovered, and so we were quickly trying to bring it to where it would be safe. But due to information in the wrong hands and our plan being discovered. That's why this ship went down. He found out and attacked, hoping to get the second bracer. We already know the damage that the first bracer can do, and we don't even know all of its abilities. I don't know as if Silent Death knew all of its abilities or knows. I mean, I, I know he, I saw him go into the water, but, but with the second one, we have no idea what may potentially be done. Uh, and we don't would, even, go ahead. I would like to spend a hero point to activate my virtue. Yeah. Um, all of this, like the part about the, uh, the anti, like 
that that stuff all but everything else is seen a little fishy andreas is just wanting to know whether or not he or i guess anyone else is lying at this point for the rest of the scene okay awesome cool so you're gonna activate that charles is definitely not lying about this he's he's being honest about what he's saying right now um and he seems very upset um he wouldn't says we it... oh go ahead no you can go um wouldn't it be better if no one were to have it in case it's something bad wants it well there is some discussion amongst the invisible college the people who are trying to preserve these artifacts as to how dangerous they might be some are very benign and some are, are very very dangerous but imagine how much we could do if we could control the weather imagine how much trade could be done imagine how much more we could explore and travel if we were able to use this to calm weather or calm storms we don't even know what it can do we know it can create storms of some kind but we don't exactly know how silent death was doing it and he obviously was not very forthcoming with anything that he discovered so we're bringing we were bringing it there to try and study it and yes there have been some artifacts that were absolutely too dangerous to exist so after they were studied thoroughly we we did have to destroy them but we always study them first Capt uh, captain wheel believed that we should know our history he was very adamant that we should know our history and that's why he was helping us and we he was willing to take me and the the bracer to labuka My, might I ask if if someone holds both, are they more powerful or is it just extra magical We're energy? We're not sure. It may be. I mean, it could be that you can control more of an area or... Um, we're not even sure exactly how it controls the storms. I'll be honest, I have great issue knowing, uh, you, you have invoked the name of my captain, whom I assume you knew only briefly, but, um, he ordered it be thrown to the sea. His condition was that if we were to be overrun, that it would be destroyed and into the sea. And obviously, he felt at that point in time that that was the only option left. He wasn't. He was only willing to risk his crew so far. Is this the According reason that you him. were rifling through my belongings, Mister Exeter, and those of my fellow crewmen? I was trying to find it to protect it. Yes. Well, that really works out for you, did it not? So was I brought along as basically protection with the guys being that you were just coming along to study or find out what I found out about the sword style? Well, you were a very good cover for what I was trying to do. And I really do study swordsmanship. This was just also part of my mission. So what do we do now that one of them is at the bottom of the ocean? Possibly, hopefully, two of them. The box was gone by the time I went to retrieve it. Well... I, once we get to shore, I will have to contact the Invisible College. The Invisible College does sound like uh, fantasy, if you uh, get my where i'm coming from i have a hard time i've never it sounds like i'm not supposed to have ever heard of it but i also have great issue with an invisible college that wants magic items to control the weather or whatever they can possibly i don't i have a real strong inkling to just throw you overboard i don't know if i like what you have to say sir and right now in the middle of the sea 
on this little ship, I get to decide who stays afloat. All I know is I've got one thief who ram rummaged through cabins, captain's cabins. Now you're here, and I've heard that you were looking for something on a boat, and which you were under on under false pretenses. Andreas, he seems to be the only one that was well, besides Ninette, seems to be the only one that was here and was honest about why they were on the boat. I just. I'm having a hard time right now after being besieged by pirates to find out that I might be set amongst some of the same. Have I been dishonest? <laughs> you haven't been <laughs> honest, sir. You may not have been dishonest, but you are definitely leaving a lot out. And you tell everything? Well... The way I was raised, it's safer that way. Charles says, All I can tell you is that while we may not go after and look for the bracer if it is at the bottom of the sea, that silent death, if he survives, and we suspect he may have been working in conjunction with others on some plan that involved these Sirnith artifacts. They most certainly will. And if that happens, who knows Who knows what could happen after that? We just don't know. It's a very big unknown. So I need to at least report what happened to the Invincible College. What you say so is I will at have Labuka. to rely... Hmm? You say that's at Labuka. Is that what you said? Yes. I don't expect you to take me that far, but if I can get on land, I can try to make my own way. Or I have other contacts, so I can at least inform the Invisible College about what happens. But if right. I don't, who knows what will happen. So I am relying on your... generosity. The goodness of my heart. Okay. Well, you're lucky. Uh... We're going to go to Western Castile. From there, if we must, we can, and if we can, we will find passage to Labuka. I happen to need to go there myself. But, if you start rifling through things, looking for things without asking, getting into trouble, because all, all I can tell is that this damned bracer has brought more woe and sorrow into my life and onto my ship and the lives of my other my fellow crewmen than anything else that we've come across. If you start going around looking for magic artifacts that are going to bring harm to my people, I will make sure you do not get to Labuka, sir. I understand. While you're understanding things, I have to deal with watching every word that comes out of someone's mouth wait more often than I have to. If you ever choose to use me for ulterior motives, Ace won't get a chance. Oh, I'll let him as well. I don't need to be the one. Um... Now, if you do need something, I'm pretty jovial. Just come at... If you needed me... Like I said, this, I would have zero issues with this at all. If you just said, hey, I'm going here. Would you mind protecting me? I would have been like, sure. But, you, but the fact you gave me a half-truth, that's what really is getting me. We try to bring as few people into it as we possibly can. Unfortunately, due to the situation, doesn't it count for something that I'm being honest now? It's why I'm not shoving you off the boat right now. Mr. Exeter, sure, you want to go, and... go ahead, Johnny. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I just want to go ahead and, uh, since honesty is the, the, the subject of the table, I guess I should say I would like to go to uh, La Boca as well. 
Well, doesn't it seem like the strands of fate are intertwining on this ship? Always, but that is uh, that is given. Uh, your your name is Ace, you said. That's what you may call me. Yes. Interesting. Uh, can I can I ask you something? <laughs> I'm a bit of a captive audience. Please, go on. And uh, Gianni begins to rifle through his uh, pack. He's like, I wish to show you uh, four things. Uh, look at them all. Uh, and uh, please uh, tell me which one. Uh, if if I were to show you these, and after you look at them, tell me which ones uh, pull at you. Uh, and he holds up a uh, the uh, some uh, sort of cards of. Uh, the, you know, he'll probably cover up the names, but it's like the Ace of Coins, the Ace of Swords, the Ace of Cups, and the Ace of Wands. Uh, which one? Well, if you, just looking at the pictures, nothing else. Which one pulls at you? Oh, I, um... Uh, is this some sort of personality test? I took one of these when I was younger. Um, <laughs> no, no, not at all. Charles says a sorte deck. I haven't seen one of those in many, many years. This is, is this really the best time for parlor tricks? Not parlor tricks. This is a very special deck. This was given to me by a strega on her deathbed. This is not a joke to me at all. At all. Is that true, Gianni? Because he, he does have his not. lying. <laughs> what was that? Absolutely not. Absolutely not true. The truth, Johnny. <laughs> the truth of what? You just heard me speak to Charles about how I cannot stand lies. Okay, it's an heirloom. Give me a break. You want more truth? Okay. I am a bastard son. My mother is in a nunnery. Uh, I am a gr I am a graduate of the Universidad uh, de uh, God, What is it? it, it it's it's freaking Montaigne. If you don't, if you don't know the name, I really doubt that you went there. I actually did. Universidad de Empresario. Is, is oh, that impressive. Are we just sharing things about ourselves? This feels. No, no, this is all the truth about me. There you go. This is <laughs> this isn't an icebreaker. I like the th I like the one with swords on it. So, swords. And very good to know. Would you like to know more? Not right now. I'm a little <laughs> distracted. Um, could you please take your cards, play over there, while you're rowing, though. If you can play your cards and row, so be it. In fact, I hate to say it, Nanette, but I think we're both going to have to start rowing if we want to get anywhere. We at least need to catch up with that, with the boat with Keg on it. Mm -hmm. We've been idling a little bit too long. Not you, Andreas, but you cannot carry us all the way to Labuka in nine hours, and I apologize for a asking you to do this, and you have been the only one. And I kind of I, I kind of get up, and I grab Exeter by the collar, and I set him down in one of the row benches, and I'm like, start rowing. You don't need to see to row. And Annette looks down at her very, very soft hands, and it's like, I understand. Here, and I actually start rifling through my trunk and I find some gloves. These might help. <laughs> I don't know if they're nice gloves at all, but they're leather gloves. They should Charles maybe has say. Charles obviously never done this before. <laughs> he's, he's extremely awkward. Um... I mean, Pip and Squeak <laughs> aren't really doing a really good job either as they're like <laughs> rowing in yes. tandem. And yeah. uh, just just for notes, I the when the box was returned to my side, I I have uh, surreptitiously just kind of shoved it into a into a bag, a satchel okay. behind where I'm sitting. Um, but I also grab an oar and start rowing. Okay. Um, it doesn't take uh, you know, once when you guys have you know really buckled down, it doesn't take too long to uh, pull up to. Uh, you know, the other two uh, long boats. So you are now within uh, shouting distance if you want to uh, shout over um, and right. talk to the other the other boat. All right. Hey, Keg! Keg! Ace! Hi! You're alive! 
Uh, yeah, so far. We'll see. So I... I was doing some- The captain isn't with you! He- He went down with the Utrecht, Keg. I couldn't get him to leave, I tried. That bastard. Right? Right? Thank you. Okay. I was feeling more mad than sad, but, uh, glad that I felt bad about that. But, any anyway! Um, I, uh, I'm figuring about nine hours to the west coast of Castile. Do you have anybody over there that, uh, has a better idea? Uh, that's about what we figure over here. All right, well, I guess we keep rowing. If you need anything, um... The, the Montaigne girl, she got us really good provisions. I don't know if she sourced out your boat as well, but we're, we're okay. Yeah, we have some over here. The other boat is a little low, though. We might want to switch some to, to the third boat. Well, I look, and I look over and I'm like, well, I see old Rock over there. He, he's probably <laughs> hungry. He gets hungry when he gets upset. Aye, and he doesn't even know about the captain yet. Oh, well, then that ship's as good as dead. <laughs> Stubborn man. Did you hear about... This crazy fantasy about going down with the damn ship. Yeah. Honor, in the, that case, is usually for the birds. Did you... Did you see any of what happened with Gunner? Well, I did hear some screaming on the ship. But, uh, not quite sure. He's a mutinous bastard. He went down with it, too. He was going on about, you know, using what we had and what fell into our hands or something like that at some point. I heard him shouting while everything was going on. Well, I used what fell into my hands to pin his dumb ass to the deck. And he Good couldn't get up. Ya. Well... I suppose it'll be easier to talk once we reach Labuka. I. Um, okay. So, uh, everybody can roll me, uh, wits and notice, please. You, at this point, have probably been rowing for, you know, two or three, three or four hours, probably. I just woke up. Is, is it a you clear? Need a is it a clear two, day? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you only need at least two raises for this. And don't forget your bonus dies for being the first time yeah. you rolled it this this scene. Yep. I don't get it. It's my second time. <laughs> <laughs> three, 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 four. Awesome. Just one second. Sure. I get to re-roll one, so give me a moment. Uh, I got one, two, I got four tens, and then my other four dice make up another two raises, so that will be six All right. raises. Awesome. Okay, so the people who got uh, raises, you see there is indeed a boat on the horizon. Ace, you know that boat is probably about 2.5 miles away from you in a uh, northwesterly direction. Way off there. I mean, you could pinpoint it. You could probably, you know, if you wanted to. Uh, let's head for that there. Do you think they can see us as well? Probably oh, yeah, can, not, Ace. You guys are what... in little... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I think I think the blue will mask as well. Um, can I tell what, what sort of ship did you say it was, or do I just see it? No, yeah, I mean, you had six successes. You actually see an Inish flag on it. Oh. Huh. And Exeter's Avalonian, right? Yes. Okay. Well, the Inish are out. Um... Hmm. 
Can I tell what direction they're going? Are they heading toward us or are they heading in the same direction as us? They're heading the same direction. Well, generally. Like, if you guys are heading just towards, they look like they're... Since since you got so many successes, you can probably guess that they're taking about the same route that you all were going and go. Um, and they're heading around Castile, probably. They're not looking to head straight to land, but they are probably going around the coastline of Castile. Which makes a lot of sense, because actually y'all were in a pretty big shipping lane. Um, in terms of the route y'all were taking, at least at sure. first, to get to Castile. Um, so that kind of makes sense. So you guys are kind of going this way because you're heading directly for wherever you can go. And they're kind of going like this, trying to like follow the, the, the coast. The currents and things. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, what I would like to do, not belay that. Do not go that way. I misheard. And so my, my, my ear, <laughs> I made, Roxanne made a dumb choice. But um, let's, let's continue the direction we're going. And I would like to keep an eye on them. And if it looks like they're going to start turning off course and coming to us, then we'll figure out more of what to do. But right now, we're just going to stay, stay on course. Would you like to attempt to signal them? Not yet. How far from, how far from, uh, dusk are we? Uh, you're about two or three hours from when it's going to start to get dark. I want to watch them quietly for at least another hour, hour and a half. Okay. I don't know if I want to get boarded by anyone anytime soon again. Yeah. (laughs) It's not on my list of things I'd like to do, I'll be honest. To you, at least to your eyes, since you saw the flag, it looks like a, a a merchant ship of some kind to you. Okay, question. I mean, you've got six six successes, so, you know. You can pretty much tell where it is. You can tell it's an Innis ship. And to you, it looks like a merchant ship. Can I see the name on the side? The um, bonus I have for Eagle Eye says that on a clear day, I can see up to a mile and even read the inscription on a ring. So Ah. if I can... Yeah, so if I can see the name of the ship, I would like to know if I recognize it as a legitimate merchant ship. It says the pot of gold on the side. Oh, have I run into that ship before? Uh, let's see. A uh, wits and sailing. Do you have a spyglass with you as well? Because I do. Helps. In fact, that is what it says on Eagle Eye, and I keep one in like a holster. Yeah, I forgot yeah. to say that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I figured. Yeah, that's not just my regular eye that can be like, ooh. John loves Roxy <laughs> from a mile away. I was like, I have wow. To, yeah, I have to have a spike. Ah! Apologies. <laughs> um, that is a 10 and two nines. And let's see. Do I get to re-roll one of those? I do. Let's re-roll this one. Uh, that is, let's see. So, don't, ba da ba 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 da da That's three successes. Mm-hmm. Excellent. You have actually had drinks with the first mate of that ship before. Oh, uh, what's his, his name? name is, his name is Douglas Cameron. He's from the Highland Marshes, just like you. Oh, and I might actually make that sound as I'm looking through my spyglass at it. And I'm like, I, I know them. One of my fellow countrymen is on that ship. Okay. Would you, would you like me to signal them? I am kind of taken aback by your offer to signal them because I don't see that you have any signaling uh, paraphernalia <laughs> upon you. Actually, uh, let me light this boat on fire real quick. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Don't no, get no. to us in time before we drown. Sure. Right. The book in their t- tales of uh, Palones and Piccolo. Have you never heard of it? Excuse? Wait, wait, wait. I heard pantalones and piccolo, and neither of those are, no, what? I don't know, what? Actually, they, Actually, are, they, they are very classic uh, theater characters. You've never heard of them. I, excuse me, I haven't seen much stage performances. <laughs> About Le Scaramouche? Le Marshal. Le Marshal. No, uh, just whatever you're going to do, and yeah, yeah, signal him. Because uh, okay. okay. I don't know where the... Where the flares are at the moment. 
Does does anybody okay. have a flat blade? I. We we I all look at galley knife. <gasps> oh, do you have a mirror, Nanette? No. Okay. <laughs> well, she has a knife. Here you go. Right. Oh, so, little known reality. Uh, that uh, Piccolo, and, uh, in the tales of Piccolo and Patrolones, he blinds the other uh, the other swordsman that he fights by shining the light of the sun in it. In his eyes. Interesting. Well, so, so do the, the way that you have to do that, though. First, I, uh, you uh, you look at the blade. You keep it flat. You point the flat of the blade at the person, and then you move it into the position of the sun. At some point between the two, it will flash in that direction. So you can actually move it back and forth and flash it at the person, or should be able to flash it at the ship, maybe. Drace is going to ask the dumb question to the GM of, what angle is the sun to, between, like, what angle is, is us? You is all it... were heading east, so the sun is setting behind you in the west. And the ship is to the west of us? Yeah. It, okay. it, like, you're heading towards it, the sun is, is behind you. Okay, so the ship is east of us, then. Yeah, east, sorry. Yeah, east. Yeah, because the yeah. sun is setting oh, you, behind us. Y'all were it's, heading east. The, what it's getting so it's you know it's probably about you know four or five. You know, I mean you three, can certainly three or try. Four in the afternoon. Uh, okay. He tries, but at some point he's probably like, oh, I think this ship is too far forward. Um. Uh. Well, as long as we're being honest. It, Andreas looks right at a dead spot in the boat, like there's no one else there. He goes, "You're gonna, you're let you get that smile off your face now." Oh, great! He's crazy. Has he gotten too much sun? I think Is so. Is that what happens? I've heard that happens. Are you feeling alright, sir? Uh, he will. Uh, he'll pull his mangosh and lift it up and go, "Make this bright." Flash really brightly. Well, if you really want me to, but I don't think I can do it. I want. You can. You. you this is still amongst our normal favors. I'll just light two candles next time. Well, isn't this an extraordinary situation? Don't you think it calls for something a little special? Sure. Are we you know hearing what? like the one side of this conversation? You're only hearing my side of only this conversation. Only the one yeah. side, yeah. And we're all just going, Amazing. oh, God. So, um, how about this? It's just, it, it's, it's very minor. I'm not asking you to do anything major. Uh, how about... Hmm... Oh, no, no. You have to tell your friends about me. Well, that's not the worst thing I've had happen. Shh. Well, maybe you still won't be able to talk to them, right? Well, at least they'll know I'm here. That's They're very fair. interesting. Well, I believe they're all staring at me right now. So yes, and they are. Yeah, I can That's agree with that. That's just a bonus. Yeah, fine. That'll be easy. All right. For once. Done. So and the as on dagger lights up, like it's just a beacon. Right. And so I'll like, uh, he'll like take, um. His set, uh, he'll basically just start covering it in the direction of the mm -hmm. to basically make it into a blinking light. Um, Ace over at the ship, you see uh, flags go up, um, at the bow of the ship, and they're signaling that they're on their way over, that they see you. Well, 
whatever the hell you're doing worked, uh, keep, they're on their way, uh, uh, turn the, turn, <laughs> turn the boat a little bit, <laughs> set for them, keg, it's the pot of gold, about a mile off, aye, aye, the pot of gold is it, and I, and, and like, as they turn over, I drop the blade down, and I, I go, yeah. and that'll do, yeah, and with, uh, uh, Andreas having revealed his his ability to everybody, uh, we will take a break, and we will then we'll see what the pot of gold has to offer. Alrighty, sounds wonderful. Uh, we will be back in ten minutes, lovelies. Please stick around. We will be right back. Have a good evening. <laughs>
Welcome back, everybody. Here we are. Um, our intrepid heroes have uh, signaled the pot of gold, recognized by Ace as a ship she has run into before. Um, and uh, Andreas has revealed a part of himself. The others may not be sure what exactly is going on, but uh, definitely something going on. Um, Charles seems fascinated <laughs> by what he just saw. Um, but he is, he has chosen to keep his mouth shut from now on. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so, um, you signal and, uh, it doesn't, you know, it takes another maybe hour or so, um, to. Well, I, I will say, I'll just go ahead and during that hour, um, is when I will, uh, fulfill this, this side of my deal. <laughs> that way mm -hmm. I don't have to like hang out about that. Yeah. Uh, so um, that was probably very strange. I'm to the point where anything that happens on this goddamn boat is not going to surprise me anymore. Um. Well, uh, long story short, I'm Anushja, uh, one of the uh, magic users of the Sarmatian Commonwealth. Uh, I have a friend... Friend in uh, is such a strong term. Um, companion. We're going to go with companion. Um, who um, is kind of permanently attached to me. You should have told them soulmate. You're not that. No, and, no. And definitely so you, not. Well, that explains who you were talking to. Yeah, there you go, talking about talking to somebody all all alone again. I don't. Yes, I'm the only one who can see them, as uh, I am the one who currently has deals with them. Oh, huh. shit. I wonder something. Uh, hmm. I just uh, I I reach into my pocket and I want to pull out a random uh you know sorte card uh and just see. Okay. Do you want to use that as a storyteller thing, or do you just want me to pull randomly? Nope. I, got you. I always love when people use decks randomly in in in, in role play That's because the they best. <laughs> because they often tell better stories. Nope. <laughs> um, or at least they tell amazing stories. Uh, so the um. But yes, I have uh, I have made some deals with it, um, and through those deals, I can draw I can draw power. Are these, well, like a business contract? Very much so, with negotiable factors. And do you have anyone who can review the con? Ooh. Oh, <laughs> dramatic. <laughs> well, you get the it's not the bad card. At least it wasn't the tower. Interesting. Yes, uh, I'm. I'm assuming I don't see that card yet. Um, uh, 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 review the contracts. I have to review them myself, and they're all verbal, but with verbal but binding. You really should get a neutral party on both sides. <laughs> so, this, and then I slip into my German accent. How much is he like you? Uh, they they are um, like me. Yes, like you. Uh, not the, we we're not we uh, by meaning that the the Ustja as a group aren't entirely sure what they are. We know that they are beings of great power, as you can see. I mean, the fact that I just um. Would you say that you find him at odds with your goals quite often? Sometimes. It's depending on how... Sometimes our goals link up perfectly, and sometimes our goals do not. Like, right now, uh, they are very interested in what's... Um, uh, yeah, not there anymore. Would he call himself a fighter, though, like you? Um, they would call themselves 
a, a lord of the battlefield. Wait, can they can they see and hear us? Yes. Lord, emperor. Oh, I'm emperor. sorry. Oh, I know I... How very odd. Actually, um, their pride is at a level where they would call themselves a deity of the battlefield. Ah, that's much better. I feel like I you owe me one for that. You're just giving me my due. And no one else can interact with them, right? Uh, also, conveniently, they can't interact with you. We could make a deal. Oh. And then I could interact with them. Introduce me to your friends. No. Come no, now, what? wouldn't, wouldn't that Montaigne lady love to be the most beautiful woman in all of Thea? And what about um, your friend over there? Wouldn't he love to have all the riches in the world, both discovered and not? And your other to... friend, wouldn't she like her own ship, her own crew? You know I can do these things. I am very aware you could do these things, and no. See, this is one of those times when uh, when they and I are at odds. Oh, you were talking to them. Fascinating. Yes. That um, It's beginning to make a lot of sense. I, uh, it cannot read my mind. They, they cannot read my mind. So, I, uh, I'll actually show him the card I pulled. The, uh, the church believes them to be those. Well, uh, the church is and often the, very wrong about many things. And the Inquisition likes to go after those of us who have uh, made deals with them. They're just jealous. Uh, the church is often very wrong about many things. Uh, it is. Yes. If it I is like anyone... your friend there. Are you sure you don't want to introduce me to him? I am very I think sure. He understands me. Probably too well. If it is anything like. Uh, what ha fate has put into my hand. I would say that it is more like a shadow or a, 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 uh, an, something that is untouchable but is like you but not like you. Something that, uh, that represents maybe your darker desires. Um, it's more of a... It's a being that I sought out. But why? I was a fool in my younger years. Aren't we all? Would the uh, other people, though, that uh, make such deals say such? That I was a fool? Well, that uh, making such a contract would be foolish. It depends. Um, there are those of us in the Ustjaya who uh, actively seek to um, seek out these uh, these creatures, beings. Um, in order to keep them from doing their bad things to other people. Tell them what I could do for them. Tell them. Very interesting. Um, our relationship is that of a... Um, what's, a what's a good descriptor? Um, uh, it's, it, it's going to sound horrible... But when you consider what they can do, um, basically, I keep them from raining chaos upon the land. That also makes very much sense. Uh, the devil is oftentimes a symbol of that which is trapped or restricted. Um, but at the same time, I use the power from that. Um, and that power... Uh, has an eventual end in the future. When you die? Oh. Um, I mean, I believe that would I believe that would free them. Um, but there's a limited number of times that I can adjust how I can use the power. Well, well, if you need anyone to review your contract next time, I love business dealings. See, you should introduce me to her. We could be great friends. If you introduce me to them, tell them what I can offer them. 
I'll forget the favors you owe me. We can even renegotiate one of our deals. I'm not freeing you. Um, I, I, I believe, um, that, uh, if I have time, I can, I, I will happily take your, take, take your services. <laughs> um, but, um, most of the time I don't have said time. That's unfortunate. That's how they get you with the really bad business deals. Yeah. But I could do things like that. That's that's how you they get you with the prime interest. You really have to be careful. You would get along really well with my sister. <laughs> Indeed. Okay. So, uh, does anybody want to do anything before uh, you you meet up with the pot of gold? I'm singing away as we slowly paddle that way i would not mind making a uh perform check of some sort. sure go for it all right so uh panache and perform or uh yeah. panache and perform go for it all right so uh you know one raise to go ahead and do the song and uh you know you can use another one to uh even, you know, help guide them to you, obviously, because they can hear you. All right. So uh, right now I'm sitting at four raises. I'm going to roll one more. Uh, Reroll one for my skill. Okay, cool. And uh, I did not get another success with that, or I didn't get another raise, so I do have one left over. Okay. Um, Go ahead and describe, I mean, what are you singing? How are you performing? What is Gianni doing? I am uh, performing uh, more for the sailors on the ship uh, or in this group. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll try and make it into a cadence so that we can uh, paddle together. But uh, mm -hmm. I'll sing a little dirty song like uh, Barnacle Bill. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, you know, oh, your whiskers scrape my cheek, said the fair young maiden. I'm dirty <laughs> and lousy and full of fleas, says Barnacle Bill, the sailor. You know. <laughs> and I'll 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 uh and squeak know this one to your to your amusement, these little these little children. <laughs> I know they uh, hear a lot of things. So they join in with you with their little oh. prepubescent voices. Not only do they know all the verses, wow. they even know the extra dirty extra verses. <laughs> oh one hundred percent. <laughs> and they take great glee with singing them very loudly <laughs> off key. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so Gianni's performing. Uh, anybody else uh, doing anything in particular before we meet up with the, the pot of gold? I feel like at least 50 more no's are said to my, my Davis before we get there. <laughs> He's kind of what you've come to see as pouting. <laughs> yes. There's a smile on my face then. <laughs> no, that's just going to clean up a little bit because uh, probably blood and whatnot. And... <laughs> yes. Awesome. Say, you, oh, oh, I just realized I have, I actually, uh, I do have some visible wounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you, well, you've do had you time to bandage so... them up a little bit. Um, if you sure. would like to uh, attempt to do that, Nanette. Uh let's let's see. Uh, scholarship. Uh, <laughs> yeah, scholarship. Uh, Wits and scholarship to go ahead and try to help. Uh, one, one to you know bandage it up. Two, he can actually uh, for every raise you get, he can get rid of one of his wounds. Yeah. What is four raises and one leftover die? Oh, more than fine. But yeah, it was just like, a, it was from, literally slashes yeah. from the duel. Yeah. So, yeah, Nanette fixes you, fixes you up using uh, what's on hand. Uh, maybe even just scraps of fabric. 
yeah. it's probably scraps of silk really really nice silk yeah. ah that wedding dress is coming in quite useful it looks like <laughs> yes. it's surprisingly absorbent <laughs> wedding dress uh, you you had a wedding no <laughs> i did not <laughs> not anymore i would like to see if she's telling the truth She's not okay. telling the truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's just going to give it to you, I guess. She's a bad liar, apparently. She's not even going to try to lie. She's just like straight up like <laughs> freaking out. Especially especially when the uh when the, the colossal is... ring on her finger like <laughs> <laughs> and the uh and the and the random and the random duelist who was there like calls out the professional liar. <laughs> and I'm also looking over at Ace and waiting and waiting. For what? I guess I'm the only one who gets in trouble and they're not being honest. Hmm? Well, I like her better than I like you is what it is. Um, <laughs> no, and uh, as as we make our way towards the uh, pot of gold, you do see that I seem to be kind of like trying to fix my hair a little bit and uh, and wipe, you know, dust some <laughs> stuff off, off my uh, sleeve and... Uh, you know, try to look a little more put together than having just like there's mm -hmm. some like gunpowder that's just stained my my shirt, and I'm like, oh, be flammable, mm -hmm. God damn it. Uh huh. I see. Okay. All right. So, um, eventually you pull up. You know, well within shouting distance of the pot of gold, and uh, you can see. Uh, Cameron, Douglas Cameron, uh, the first mate that you know, Ace, uh, on, on the, and he's looking over, uh, towards, towards the boats and, uh, sees you. Ace! Didn't think to find you down there. What you uh, doing? Uh, uh, well, you know, I woke up this morning, thought I'd sink a ship and uh, get into a pirate battle with a bunch of dirty right bastards from God knows where. Sounded like a bunch of Adachis, if I could read his sign language right. And uh, here we are. Regular day then, eh? <laughs> it's Tuesday. <laughs> All right. Well, let us uh, let us pull you up in there. I. Right? All right, bring the rope in, and they will um, start to, you know, throw over, you know, ropes to pull y'all up closer, and you know, throw throw, uh, you know, uh, rope ladders over the side. Um, I I think is there. I I know Nanette probably wouldn't have a lot of experience with this, so I will make her roll athletics and stuff. I think the other three would probably be competent enough for rope ladders. Uh, to go ahead and, uh, but you know, uh, let's let's just have everybody do it. Why not? That'll be fun. Um, and we're gonna do uh, uh, do, 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 finesse and athletics. You'll need get... one raise to get up the ladder. Did we get a bonus die? If you have not rolled this before, no, you sure do. It. Not in this scene, but uh, but yeah, I think I had to roll it in the past. But uh, does this count as being aboard a ship? And could I use my uh, sea legs? So yes, that I may you only sleep. need one raise to get to the top. But if you have other raises, you can. Uh, I mean, the risk. So you'll need one raise to get to the top, one risk to avoid falling, probably. So two risks total. But y'all usually manage to do that. So not going to be too difficult. Three raises and one dice to buy. All right. Uh, if I could use One some raise. of my extra raises to help those that might be struggling a little bit. Indeed. How did Nanette do? A, a single raise across all my dice. <laughs> With okay, no, so nothing could... left over at exactly 10. Well, she can get to the top, but she didn't exactly make sure that she could uh, not fall. Um, so she will definitely, poor Nanette will need uh, help up the ladder. How did Gianni do? Uh as, even with all the dice, I have two raises. I, I was okay. expecting more, but no. Yeah, he can, he's been he's been you know up through a lot. He just got you know fight and everything, so it makes sense. But but yeah, yeah, yeah Yannette was struggling. Nanette was struggling for for a bit there, uh, going up this rope ladder at the side of the boat. 
But uh, y'all managed to get to the deck of the Pot of Gold. It is a extremely well cared for ship. Um, it's very light wood. Um, it does look a little, you know, golden, perhaps, you know, a light, light kind of golden wood, you know, rather than the dark wood of, of the usual. It runs the Inish flag um, and also um, the flag of, you know, uh, the pot of gold, the ship flag itself. Um, and uh, you know them, Ace, to be, uh, you know, just a just a trading uh, trading ship um, that usually hangs around. um this coastline going between Avalon, Matane, Castile, uh, Bodachi, and then kind of back again. They kind of stick to the main um, main countries there. And um, yeah, so you have met um, Douglas Cameron before, uh, but you have not met uh, anybody else on the ship. He kind of told you about it, and that's where you uh, learned all this stuff while y'all were drinking. He is... Um, Ace would recognize him, but what you all see is he is a very broad chested, not and not extremely tall, you know, 5'10, but extremely broad chested, Scottish hairy, you know, dark auburnish red hair, you know. Think like um Bill Connolly, maybe, but younger, Billy Connolly, but younger. Kind of, you know, sure. just very, you know, um, but not as not as tall, probably. So, um, and you can see his hair was uh, once, you know, reddish and everything like that. And uh, and he says, uh, "Welcome aboard the pot of gold." Uh, can't thank you enough, Cameron, for picking us up. Uh, we. You headed for Castile, it looks like, eh? Yeah, we're headed for Puerto del Cer. Del Cer. Ah! Perfect. That is where all of us were set to go. I assume the other boats have come up too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They're they're helping on the other boats. And you're, uh, you know, Keg comes over and uh, he says, uh, I'm the, I was the first mate of the Utrecht. Uh, which went down just recently, and we formally request passage to your next protocol. And he says, "I have permission from Captain O'Connell to to give it, if that is the case." So, um, so uh, let us. We will do our best to give you some some room to uh, be comfortable and uh, and get some rest uh, from all of that. He says, but uh, I definitely want to hear from Ace. Uh, tell us what, tell me, tell me what happened. I mean, uh, um, and he says, uh, he looks at you and he says that, and then he turns to the first mate and he says, uh, the captain is waiting for you in her uh, uh, cabin so you can go in and tell her what happened. And then he says, and if you wouldn't mind filling me in Ace on what, what happened. So I'm going to fill in Douglas and Keg is going to go fill in the captain? Yeah. Is that what you said? Okay. Um, I seem a little crestfallen that I don't get to go talk to the captain. But, uh... Well, you'll meet her in time. Well, <clears throat> as it is... <clears throat> as it is, uh, well, we were heading to Puerto del, so del, del Ser and... Suddenly the storm, this wall, wall of storm appeared and, uh, well, the, the head of it was a pirate ship called the Whisper. And I look, I look to see if I see any recognition in his eyes. He knows it. I mean, I've heard tales of it running around this, this area recently, but, uh, you ran into the Whisper and you're alive. Well, the ship didn't make it. Wheel didn't make it. Neither did Gun, but Gun was working with him. So that was a uh, that was a rough start to Tuesday. Some bastard come out of a portal in the bottom in the in the galley. Fought a sorcerer. Caused all kinds of issues. Yeah, we've had. It's been like you know. I know there are all kinds of things around, but 
sailing on the Utrecht is usually quite quiet. There's not a whole lot of uh, fuckery happening, you know. We just kind of do our jobs. And uh, we took on four, four passengers, five, four, at Char uh, Charus. <laughs> four and a half, but I'll tell you about that one later. Uh, four, and they, um, I don't know, ever since they've been there, just everything changed. But there was a fight. A lot of fighting. There was this piece of armor or something seemed to have a, uh, I don't know, sorcery in it that the captain of the Whisperer was wearing, Silent Death. Best, I guess you've heard of him as well, I assume. But uh, I, I tried to shoot him. Like I said, I heard, I heard some rumors, but I didn't know he was, he was so close, so close to the close line. Oh, he was here, and he's moving fast, too. It's like the storm gave him extra speed. But we could not run him. They boarded. Uh, but I tried to shoot the magical bracer, it looked like, off his arm. A magical and, bracer? Uh, I mean, oh, these four people, uh, one of them, he just goes on and on and on about magical items and the invisible college and a bunch of Labuka bullshit. The Buka. Yeah. Never been there, have you? No, I mean, it's, it's location, exact location is kept quite a secret. Except for those who are supposed to have business there. Well, anyway, I tried to shoot it. It shot out some lightning arc and set the mast on fire. That was my fault. I... I know we were being boarded, but I made a foolish move, and it ended up... We ended up losing the ship. I don't know how to, uh... I don't know how to... Deal with that, but I guess we'll deal with it as it comes. Right now, I just need to get to Castile so I can lose all these stragglers that have just followed along. Well, most of them. Some of them are nice. <laughs> well, or you think you're going to be signing up with another ship? Where's your sister at these days, Cameron? Oh, Maybe. You know. <laughs> oh, you know her flitting about. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here and there. Well, we'll see. I don't plan to sign up on this one, if that's what you're asking. Eh, we wouldn't have room for you anyway. He, like, clashed you on the bed. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, <laughs> we were figuring being there by... I don't know, like eight, nine, maybe tonight. Is that uh, where you are? Well, uh, you know, if you're trying to hit the coastline, I, I, that makes sense. But Pedro de Cell's on the other way. We won't get there till tomorrow. Uh, that's fine with me. Do you got beds? I was looking yeah, at we'll possibly sleeping on that little lifeboat, and I really don't want to. Yeah, they're uh, trying to make room for you down in the hold. Sounds good. Accommodate you as best we can. Um, All right. Well, I I'm appreciate sure the it, cap Douglas. I'm sure the captain will want to speak to you at some point, too. I assume I will tell her what I can about the Whisper and Silent Death and his translator and his little portal friend. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually think he gave me a name. I'll have to think about that. Pretty sure he gave me a name. I've got it somewhere mm. in here. Hey, right. well, uh, just uh, sit tight, and uh, I'll let you know when uh, your space is ready. Do you need some water or food? Actually, we were quite well provided for. Uh, one of those, one of those new passengers seems to do quite well with uh, taking inventories and things. She got the lifeboats loaded up. Ah. But if you don't mind, I'm just going to. Uh, find a place in a hammock and uh somebody's hammock i don't care whose i'm gonna find a hammock and i'm just gonna put my hat over my eyes and take a nap hi okay um so um and he kind of looks at the other three of you uh standing there and he says um douglas cameron 
first mate of the pot of gold. Uh, welcome aboard. If there's anything I can do, uh, let me know. I appreciate it. I think I should be fine. Okay. Uh, just a place to lay down for a bit. Okay. All right. So, um, you are now on the pot of gold. Uh, all your stuff has been uh, brought up, what you have. Um, is there anything in particular somebody wants to do um, now that you're on the ship? Um, uh, Andreas will politely ask uh, everyone to keep his um, friend, companion. Yeah, we're going to go with companion. Um, on uh, 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 Quiet. It's not something he wants to be. Uh, he wants known everywhere. You said the uh, the Vatican would not under like it. I understand this. I will not reveal it. Thank you. Hey, I, it's understandable. Even this invisible college. I you know, it's, did they not understand? Like the uh, so where I am from, we have. Uh, magicians called strega but for the last couple hundred years our nation like, days what like like the uh like the princess no no strega strega like no yes the, the princess well either way uh we also call them faith witchers but the thing is is that uh we have been paying the vaticine church now for a couple hundred years in order to keep them from killing them you know and then they, they don't declare them heretics either it's like you know the invisible college why don't they just pay the Vatican? Hmm. I'm sorry, oh, but I... you want to know the quickest way to a man of the class heart? It is through the coin. That's Charles Exeter, almost everyone. Charles Exeter says, well, we're scholars. We're not rich people. Are you on a boat, sir? If you are on the boat, I, I guarantee that your wealth is greater than the vast majority of people who work in the field. But I don't think the Vatican Church will take that in exchange for not destroying items. There is always a way, sir. And you did mention some mercantile fiscal benefits so among your magical items. So... I'm sure there's a way to put the scholarly information to use that makes profit. Well, well, potentially. I mean, we we know very little about this thing. I mean, it potentially could be useful. That's what we want to find out. But I guess we won't now that it's at the, the bottom of the ocean. Probably for the best, but there might be other items. Well, we are constantly looking for such things. That's true. Very, very true. This bracer is, is supposed to be... It has lots of... Uh, it has lots of... Hold on a second. Um, sorry. Hold on a second. <laughs> okay. This bracer does have uh, what little history we do know leads us to believe that it might be useful. It was the, the apparently it was acquired by a Vodachi who then used it to acquire a bunch of other Sirnith artifacts, according to legend and very old Vodachi texts. We suspect, but we're not sure, that Silent Death believes he may be descended from this Vodachi. Sailor? Pirate? Hmm. It was quite a long time ago. We have very little record of it. He was only known as the Tempest. And he would try and find these artifacts. And there's said to be a great horde of these artifacts that he was setting for a private place where he was hoarding all of these things. But there was some sort of mishap, perhaps? We're not sure with the bracers or... Perhaps there was some kind of mutiny on board, and the ship went down with all of those things on board. After what we have witnessed, I'd say a mishap is very possible. Quite possible. 
Quite possible. Am I anywhere near this conversation? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just listening quietly. I've got my, uh, I've got that satchel that I might have put that box in. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Across my shoulders. And, uh, I'm just holding it. Yeah. Waiting for a place to stretch out and put my hat down over my eyes and use my bag as a pillow. Yes. We're not sure of... Uh, the name of the ship we've been trying to track down, what perhaps might be any survivors. But, like I said, uh, we suspect that there may have been since one of these bracers turned up in one of our digs. Interesting. And you don't know where that is now, then? Or is that the one you're looking for? Well, Silent Death had one, but the other one was on the Utrecht. Could there have been more? What's that? Could there have been more? There may have been other items, but bracers usually come in pairs, but there could have been other items, I suppose. He definitely had more artifacts on the ship. He used the bracers to plunder other ships and other sites and gain more artifacts that he was hoarding somewhere. And we understand he was taking a, a ship with a bunch of these artifacts to some place to hide them better. But that's where our details become fuzzy. It's all old stories and tales, but we're trying to follow them closely. Interesting. It's all very interesting and fascinating and all of it, but <clears throat> we do know that the, uh, we at least know that the captain had one, so there's one. We threw another one into the ocean. I think you're at a loss on this one. It's long gone. Might as well start yes. looking for something else. Yes. If I can make contact with some other members, I can let them know and see what they want me to do. I look at the two that have strange powers. I'm like, do either of you know how to uh, perhaps do some of that that uh, one place to another magic that, uh, that, what was his name, Dubois? Do either of you know how to do that? Get a message to this lads? Who are you Both saying this to? Both of you. You and uh, Andreas. As far as I'm concerned, Andreas is magical. I'm not sure I believe in his little friend. <laughs> I believe uh, that he thinks it's a friend, but I think he's just magical. The uh, powers of fate do not do such things. I... You've never even asked me to finish out what I have, what the uh, fate has told me about you. Uh, well, I was told as a young lady to never trust what fate has for me and to make my own. Fate, fate is, is both current, current and past. And past. Maybe later. Do I recognize the name Dubois? Because I don't know if he actually introduced himself to Nanette. Um, well, um, yeah, you can probably gather who she's talking about when she said, like, magic, etc., etc., etc. You had heard that there was quite a scandal a few years ago. You were at a party. And you had heard that the oldest son of the Dubois family had disappeared to who knows what and he had supposed to be taking over the family fortune business take over the title um but he had just disappeared and no one knew where he went this uh reads a little too close to home but uh fun <laughs> So that name does, does ring a bell in that context. As far as, you know, you heard that story about the oldest son um, disappearing. And he was a powerful Porte mage and he was set to take over the title of his family, et cetera, et cetera. And um, just disappeared one day. Uh, I, uh, I could get a message to them, but... Um... I'd prefer not to. That's fine. We'll figure out how to get him where he's going. 
but I do. Uh, sh oh, go ahead. Oh, I've, there's probably some way we can send a letter. The next port we go to, I should probably send one home as well. Of course, of course. I kind of give a, a pointed look to the to those of us that were on the boat, since, uh, and I try to convey silently when I say, um, "We'll get him where he's going." Uh, and I mean by that that uh, I'm not going to mention the name Labuka, but. We'd already discussed needing to go there, so. Uh, but by not bringing it up, it's more or less because I don't want the people of the Pot of Gold to know where we're headed. Mm. And I'm hoping you all pick up on that with my stern, stony face. <laughs> um, would anybody else like to uh, do anything immediately? Or, you know, upon... I um I think Andreas is going to collapse when he finds wherever there is. Yeah. He, um, so, he was ruined. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Eventually, um, you know, uh, D Douglas comes back up and uh, he lets you know that uh, they prepared some, some space for you and the rest of your um, crew and everything like that. Um, and uh, so I assume you all um, head down to, to, to rest if not, uh, absolutely, we can certainly I, I... do something else. Do they have cabins that we could potentially buy? Um, <laughs> not really. It's it's a merchant ship. Um, you'll you'll kind of have to uh, rough it. <laughs> They've kind of set up a, a space in the hold with like blankets and some extra hammocks and stuff like that. But there's like you know quite a few of y'all, so um, you oh. know. I just realized something. Um, how do Nanette's hands look? Soft. <laughs> yeah. And how long were we rowing? I mean, even bit. with leather gloves, they're probably a little blistery. Yeah, little yeah, blistery. Prob oh, yeah, probably. Actually, is yeah. With, if we've been rowing, probably kind of effed up. Yeah. Um, Andreas will um, recommend a uh, something he he used when he was younger and learning the sword and having to mess up his hands uh, to help heal her hands faster. Awesome. Okay, so um, Amelia and Andreas are heading down to, to the cots, the, the hammocks that have been set up. Yeah, and I, um, I am definitely keeping some part of my body is always touching that satchel with the with the bracer or box mm -hmm. in it. Uh, I do use it for a pillow. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Johnny, do you head down as well or do you do something else? Uh, honestly, I don't feel like uh, this ship is going to hold as many secrets as the last one. So probably am going to go down to sleep. Okay. Uh, Nanette? Um, she's running on like two days of high stress and in uh, all sorts of, uh, I guess, endorphin highs. So she's just going to probably pass out. Doesn't even matter where it is. Okay. No care in the world. Probably will splay out far too much for somebody who'd live like sleeping in such a small pile. <laughs> mm hmm. Okay. All right. So, um, y'all. Fall asleep. Um, Pip and Squeak sleep next to Nanette. <laughs> She's soft like a pillow. <laughs> um, and everybody sleeps. Um, however. Oh no. Let's see. No. We didn't set a watch. <laughs> Classic rookie adventure mistake. <laughs> right after splitting the party. We split the party right after. Uh, I mean, logically, we all like we just went through combat, a day full of rowing. We all would have collapsed immediately. All right. Okay. So, um, one, two, three, four. Okay. Um. All right. So, go ahead and roll. Um, everybody down there go ahead and roll wits and notice 
or whatever you think. I mean, this is going to be like, how deeply are you all sleeping? <laughs> exactly. And this should and be a new I scene, right? And I rolled four successes. What? I was going to say, this is a new scene, right? So we should all Yeah, it is a new bonus. scene. So, you know, you are now on the, on the pot of gold. So you can, first time you've done it, four raises. So you need at least that many to wake up. I think I would like to go ahead and fail. I would also like to fail. All right. You know what? Hero Failing. <laughs> all right. Yes. Hero point for b all of you. <laughs> Hold I am up, tired. Let me, let me, let me see what happens. <laughs> I I did get four on my roll dice, but um, Ninette would like to sleep for once. Thank you. I was gonna say I feel like the, the the three characters either between just pure exhaustion from doing so much in combat plus rowing or stress of the day slash and then I'm not sure Giovanni's reason, but you know Giovanni. <laughs> I I think it would be entertaining. Thing. I did get four, but I don't yes. want to, like, get up out of bed. I want to pretend like I'm still asleep. Okay. Well, um, you don't even need to do that, because what woke you up is this bright, bright light from under your pillow. Shit. Does it make a noise or rumble or anything? Does it it's kind of humming, but... actually. Piss. Um... Are any of my other crew f crew members in the room with me? Uh, every, you're in the room with everybody. Because you all are kind okay. of in the hold. Nice. Nice. And it's just the four of us. And Pip and Squeak and Charles. Well, and the other crew from the other two Oh, boats okay, yeah. Well. I forgot. Yeah. There were other people on that boat. And it wasn't Charles. just me running that boat. Um, I, when I look around, do I see anybody else moving from the ship? Yes. You okay. see um, Charles kind of blinking, uh, you know, somewhere, you know, kind of, you know, kind of waking up a couple of people away from you. Go back to bed, Charles. It's just a dream. <laughs> he hasn't been able to find glasses or pawn glasses off somebody else, right? So he's still, no. he's still vis visually impaired. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I forgot to turn my phone's brightness down, and I checked the time. Oh, oh. Um, uh, that's it, Charles. Just go back to bed. That's it. Um, dee -dee 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 -dee. And I, I hum a lullaby <laughs> as I like try to like move the satchel in such a way that maybe it hides. If I sit up, is it is the humming still very audible, or was it only audible when I was next to it? No, it's actually getting louder. Piss. Okay. So, um, I, uh, <laughs> mm. all right. Everybody else <laughs> make a roll. This time, three raises to wake up. Are you all still going to fail at this point? I deserve my beauty sleep. <laughs> okay. So, Nanette's just going to fail. Yeah. No, no. The roll this time. You're going to roll this time? I'll roll, but I'm not going to wake up because this is like the worst roll I have next to fighting. Yeah, so three races this time. One. One raise and one bonus die. Don't forget to take um, your hero point again, Nanette, for failing. So you have a few now to use. Two. Three raises with one bonus die. All right. There's a humming and light that, that's waking you up. I look at the obvious point of trouble, my Davis. He's not looking at you. He is looking very interestedly over in another direction. Uh, I kind of ease up, um, I guess, hand on my blade, my... Uh, my main saber, not my mangosh. Um, and uh, kind of like ease up uh, and go, what's going on? 
do you look in the direction your Davis is? Are you you yeah, see oh, yeah. a, Amelia there, um, who looks to be awake, and there's a light over there. Seems the humming is coming from over there. I, I kind of ease out of the hammock as best I can and kind of walk over so I can talk more in hush tones. And um, are you one too? No, me? No. Yeah. One what? No. Whatever you're asking. No. Um, but you, you. Get over here. And I'm like, what? I know that you picked this up out of the sea and you brought yeah, that Yeah, it was floating there. Bookworm. I thought. You brought that bookworm on board. What do I, you know well, about Well, technically, this? he brought me on board. Either way, you came together as a pair. Yeah. What do you know about this? About what? I don't know what's in the box. The box. I picked the box. You said I picked out of the water. I only picked up a box out of the water. I look around. Is anybody else stirring? Um, well, it's a good point to have everybody roll again. You can choose to fail. Okay. This time it'll only take you two to wake up. And uh, this time Charles is going to go again. Since now there's talking. All the hush whispers. Ooh. Yeah. No? no. Not even a raise. Are you gonna fail, Nanette? Oh or... yeah. Okay. I deserve my rest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this time Charles like like it is is blinking and he kind of looks over at you two and he says, What's what's happening? Nothing. Go to uh, just just go just... to sleep. <sighs> okay, Actually sleep this with that time I noise. I start it's, it's... I start to oh go ahead. It's it's the boat. Boats creak. I, I start to shush him, and then I'm like, wait. And I go forward, and I'm like, you, you, look at this. Come here. Think for a minute. You can't see it. I forgot. But don't worry about it. This thing in my... I have this item. You know about artifacts and things. And I'm trying to speak very quietly. But I'm a little okay. angry, so I don't know how quiet it is. But I'm doing my best. Mm -hmm. Can someone do something that makes it do this? Like a finder spell. Uh, what, and what, what is he looking at? Like, what are you actually The light in, the light in the bag, the bag glowing. Okay, I have the bag an item glowing. that is, is, is singing a pretty little tune, waking up everybody, and it's, uh, turn it off. How do I turn it off? Well, well, well some Sirnith artifacts have been known to have some abilities to find each other. Um, if, if, if they're, if they're paired or, or part of a set of some, some, some kind, what, what, you have a Sirnith artifact? I said nothing of the kind. I said I had a thing. That's all I said. And I cover it again with my arms again, as best I can. A, a thing I that glows and, and makes noise. That. Shit, shit, shit. <laughs> what is it? I don't even know. Look. It was floating next to the boat. I thought it might be I, like I thought it might be useful. At this point, if you want to wake up, you can. <laughs> um, Gianni, if you want to wake up, you can. Or if you're just like I don't know what they're doing, but I don't care. Um, that is your your prerogative as well. Some of us are trying to sleep here. Jeez. I have tried <laughs> so many times at this point. I'm not going to be able to really contribute much. I'm just like you know. My character is pretty much the opinion. I'm going to roll over and ignore the glowing Furby in the corner. Did you mention, Gianni, out of question, John, did you mention earlier when you were talking about things that you noticed something odd in the in our captain's cabin? Or is that still a secret? I have not mentioned that at all. Okay. Okay. I'm I'm going to look around and see if any of the other crew are uh i like i would literally like to do a, a wits notice to see if i see anybody else stirring with the light and the sound okay or yeah. eyes moving strangely in the night because with the light i can see everything yep okay go ahead roll not too hard you just need one raise i got four 
Okay, yeah. People are starting to like stir and like piss, piss, roll piss. over. Okay. And uh, yeah, starting to moan like what the hell, you know, like go back to bed. I'm sorry, it's just a thing. It's it's uh it's one of the children. And I I go and I hover over like <laughs> Pip's bed and I'm just like, "Okay." <laughs> Which is where I guess they're sleeping in Ninette's hat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <I'm> like, <laughs> yeah. So now Ninette, like, there's a bright light in your <laughs> And a humming <laughs> next to you. Okay. Why would uh, you do this? <laughs> I just tried I'm to so- sleep. <laughs> I know. Me too. Me too. But okay. And very quietly, I will open the bag. With all the, you know, with the soul just shining out of it. Um, like that scene in Pulp <laughs> Fiction. And I'm just like, I open it up. And then I flip open the... I open the box ever so carefully. You can see... If, if it's allowing that the box is in there, Andreas, and uh, which you knew already, Nanette, but I will, and uh, Charles, I'm like, it's a box if you can't tell. And I open it and just glimpse the bracer. And like, is the light emanating from the bracer itself or the box? I assume it's the bracer. It, it's, like the light yeah, is sh- the shining out of yeah. the box. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, whoop. And then I close it and I'm like, we need to get off of this boat. I don't trust anybody. I don't know where to do. I don't just know where to put this. Well, look so, how good that helped. I mean, I appreciate you. I really do. But look how good that worked. I just Wait, want to know if somebody is doing. That's what this. they were looking for. Yes, and oh. you found it. Well, hence my suspicions. Technically, they found it. Which means I probably should have ignored it, but it was driving them nuts oh. that I wasn't opening it. Oh, that's a oh. pretty little oh trinket that here? I could is use. Is he doing? Is he? Is huh? he doing this? Are they doing no. this? No. They can't I do look anything like, unless I. I look in the completely they... wrong direction. I'm like, if you're doing it, quit. They can't do anything unless I like deal with them. Well, we have to figure out a way to hide this. Um, uh, um, you, you're um, muttering. Some people are like, who has a lantern on? Shut it off. We're in the <laughs> hold, you said, right? So, yeah. Like, there's so you... like crates and barrels and uh huh bar- barns and potteries. Okay. So I'm mm-hmm. going to look for a bag of grain, like a big old, or a barrel of like something that's not water. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm going to try to like dig it out and shove the bag into that and sit on the lid. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm going to try to do, to try to hide the light and maybe the humming. Does it feel <coughs> hot? It Does it feel like it's heating up? Or is there a temperature change? Nope. Okay. If, if Actually, if anything, it feels a little cooler. Cold. Oh. I don't like this. Is there is there a window? Is there a porthole down here? Porthole, yes. Um, I am going to uh I'm going to look out the porthole. Or I'm going to send someone. Someone look out the porthole, is there a storm? I uh, I will go and look. There is Do no we feel storm. Like we're be- no storm. Do it feel like we've been tossed about at all? No. Uh the the the, the seas Charles look says... <laughs> normal? <laughs> yeah, they look fine to you. Um, yeah, it, Charles says somebody must be trying to. You you had the bracer the whole time. Shut up, Charles. It doesn't matter. You <laughs> He's lost not your glasses. Speaking you very low. Shut up, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, nerd. <laughs> you couldn't even keep your glasses on your face. Um, he says, I... "Well, somebody must have found the other one. Somebody must have the other one." Piss, 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 piss. I Wait, who has the other good. one? And he's mean and kind of handsome but very mean <laughs> and he's seen our faces piss 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 and okay, he's working well... with a sorcerer oh shit who can go anywhere um well I think so maybe you do know from what you heard Duval was pretty powerful so you don't know what exactly that means but you do know I mean he was kind of a golden child of his family he was like he's such a powerful sorcerer he's so smart and da 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 and all this stuff that's why he was such a huge scandal because it was like 
it was like he has everything why would he wait. do that you know like it's all like that. tomas all over again Ugh. <laughs> wait how, how do you know because he he appeared right behind me oh i'm going to wake gianni up while they're having this discussion <laughs> he he just uh you know, opened one of those holes and came right through it. Oh, okay. Yeah, he did that when he escaped from me. He's still well, alive? technically I let him go. Uh, good, mm, good morning, uh, Miss S. Um, this is a surprise. Uh, yeah, don't flatter yourself, Vodachi. I, uh, we have a bit of a problem, and I, I like... I'm like, come on, come on, and I and I motion for him to follow me over to where the light is probably still creeping through the the slats yeah. on the barrel. Yeah. In Vidachi, I stand up, rude to me, even when asking for help. And I uh, I walk over. Yeah, it, it, there's this thing glowing in the barrel, and there's this humming noise, very very muffled, but you can hear it. Okay, what do we weigh it down and then throw it in the ocean? I know. I don't, well, I'm not sure. I don't think you can just walk to the bottom of the ocean and live. What seems to be going on here? We have a glowing thing, and it won't stop glowing, and I'm trying to figure out how to get it to stop glowing and stop shining. Uh, oh, well, glowing is shining, but stop, stop humming. You do, you do things, right? What kind of things do you think I do? You play with your little cards. Are they magical? No, uh, not so much in that way. Curse is like, I wish I had, I had my books. Look, I, I, I have about how to, how to, how to stop all those things. You stop me from getting my books. He's getting like really, really loud, <laughs> as if you'd have pulled, as if you'd have pulled it's the a, right It's book. a boat. Do they have, uh, do they have uh, barrels of pitch for the sides of the boat? Perhaps I'd say so. That might be one way to at least get it to stop glowing. Hmm. Okay. Um. Mm -hmm. uh, who do I ask? Who do I ask? I don't know my way around this boat. I mean, I've. Uh, this is a completely different ship than the Utrecht. What about your friend? The the the, 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 the tall man. The tall hairy man. <laughs> yeah. The, the broad man. I didn't catch his name. It was tall Harriman. Uh, he's. He didn't uh, look like Chris Evans, so I really didn't care. Yeah, he, he wasn't kind <laughs> enough to remember. He, he doesn't do it for me either. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Um, oh, fuck, 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 fuck. Um, everybody go back to sleep. It's okay. There's just a... Mm, and I try to hum the same. But you just woke me up. Song. Not uh, you. Uh, Not go, you. go ahead and, and everybody who's going to try to like settle everybody down while you're moving around, go ahead and do... Uh, 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 wits and and convince to to kind of you know get everybody like it's under control. You can go back to bed. Actor, can you um um sing them a song to you know sleep? Yes, yeah, sing them a song, <laughs> actor. <laughs> That's how it works, right? Uh, sure. <laughs> I uh, I'll sure I'll hum them a tune. Okay, yeah, go ahead and roll your perform. Uh. Yeah, you're gonna sing a lullaby. Yeah, go yeah. To sleep, little sailors, go to sleep. <laughs> In your dreams, you'll meet something. <laughs> uh, the person of your dreams. Uh, that's a good lyric. I will have to write that one down. Uh, so I'm looking at one, two. Three, four successes with one left over. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so so Gianni starts singing. Uh, what, what are you gonna sing, or or you know, how are how are you doing this? Uh, I will sing uh, a you know, I'll sing a song. Uh, you know, I know every language. I'll actually sing something in Innismore, and okay. uh, you know, especially for the boat. But you know, uh, maybe I know a lullaby of some sort for them sure. uh, or at least or at least a song of comfort a song about home and i won't really sing the lyrics but i'll hum it ah. as 
as he sings, uh, I'm going to go, I'm probably going to take, hmm, I'll probably see, does anyone want to come with me? I'm going to go see if I can find Douglas. Should someone keep an eye on this thing? Uh, sure. sure. Yeah, don't let anyone take it. Not, and I look in the wrong direction again, especially not you. And then I look at Charles and I'm like, and not you either. Hey. You're kind of on thin ice, Charles. I still think you should go into the ocean where it belongs. But he'd be able to find it there, wouldn't he? I mean, he has a porte mage, right? We can't get it to the bottom of the ocean. I think. I don't. I don't think so. Unless he's if, it. if we're using Stargate mechanics, hey, what? there's an air bubble that's created when the portal opens, and it just you can just live in a second. <laughs> and not, and not how portal magic works. Not that I would know. Okay. But <laughs> arced it. That's what anyway. Porte mages do. They they leave a mark of blood usually. Which you realize now is probably how he got aboard the ship in the first place. Almost well, he had an inside man, so that's probably yeah, it. yeah. It makes sense. It uh, tracks. I won't say it though. You, do you want you to come with me, a... Nanette? I'm going to look for Douglas. It's it's the magic of Montaigne. I know I know some things about that. Also, uh, my brother is a port so it's not a big deal. Uh, All right. Um. So like thing. <laughs> while you guys are talking, the little the barrel that you've kind of shoved it in, starting to shake a little bit. And piss, vibrate. Piss, piss. Okay. So. Uh, okay. I. Oh, damn, 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 damn. Just go, I, go get the thing and we'll throw it overboard or something. something. This is too dangerous for us. I, for I, take off, I take off my jacket, my pig wool jacket, and I wrap the box in it. <laughs> nice. And nice. then wrap my sash around that, trying to trying to reduce the amount of noise it's making further yes. just by adding it, layers it of is, fabric. Yeah, it's vibrating in your hand, and you know you can hear the hear the noise from it um, as well. I follow, um, mostly because I'm trying to get it away from the sleeping people. Yeah, no, um, that's fine. Let's t- let's. I I honestly think the best thing that we can do right now is get it out of this room and away from anywhere where any people are sleeping. I don't know. I don't know what to do with this thing. And I I look again at Gianni and I'm like, do you know anything about magical items and can, and making it stop? Look, I I can try just as well as anyone else, but no, not really. I uh, know my knowledge is mostly of the stage and understanding uh, the cards. It's not really magic. You keep telling me about finding out my fu- my my fate, my yes. fate on the cards. Fate is a real thing, as much as, as much if not more than the god of the Vatican. Can you see the fate of this item? Well, let me see, and I I'll, I'll draw a card looking at it. And actually, what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll go ahead and activate my arcane and start looking for strands of fate. Oh yeah. Um... From wh- uh, what strands are you looking at? Uh, what in particular? Oof. I mean, are you looking at the people around you? Are you looking at the box? Are you? I'm looking at it, but I'm looking for I'm looking for like something pulsing. Like I want to see a strand that is, you know, controlling it or something oh, that yeah. is like you know there is going a, off in the distance. A strong. You usually see these type of threads between people or things that are like intimately connected like husbands and wives or or what you would say with soulmates um is coming from the box and it is thick and it is and it is vibrating as well and it and you can see it heading out of the ship towards towards where where you all came from and it seems to be like almost trying to pull it Johnny uh, pulls randomly from the card, but uh, from the deck, goes ahead and uses it and pretty much lies through his teeth. Uh, but he is 
I would believe that uh, the individual of who the, the, has the other one of those is still alive. And uh, I'm holding up the uh, Knight of Wands. Merde. What do you see? Tell me what you see. It's death, whatever his name was. No, He's no, alive. I, I, un I understand. What do you see? How could you He's tell He's calling that to it. He is attached to this somehow. More than likely, what your friend said about, uh, and I, I say that to Andreas, what your friend said to, about uh, pears. Can you see the attachment? That's what I'm asking you. What can you see? Look, Are you just shitting me? No, I'm not shitting you. I am telling you that if I have drawn this and it is true, he is coming. He, he is, is causing that to happen. Not, not one of us here in this room. room can stop that. I am looking for ways to figure out how to at least mundanely deal with this because I don't, none of us, I, unless you want to try and put it on. Is throw it overboard not the phrase? I, I was about I to say, I, I think do we you want it, it how, it, how easy would it be to find this if it was thrown overboard? Charles, oh, if no. I put it on, can I stop it? Uh, we 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 don't know if uh, if 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 that's possible or or if you'd even be able to take it off again. What if you just make the lightning everywhere? I start to run for the uh, for above decks. I, I follow. We just we just need to find something heavy, and then we just we just throw it to the bottom of the ocean. I don't. I don't think that's going to work. If he's looking for it, what is he going to do with two of them? It can't be good. You saw what he could do with one. That Open the box. Like a, Open the box. Above our pay grade, the kind of problem. <laughs> it does. It does, but I don't know what else to do. And I assume that there are going to be other sailors and, and people yeah. from the pot of gold working on everything. I am. Yeah, I mean, like, it's like, you know, third shift or second shift sure. or whatever. You guys are heading up the stairs now. You guys are kind of like moving this conversation. Or are uh, you still like down in the hold? I, no, we're moving. I'm moving up to above. I'm on. I'm heading for the main deck. Mm -hmm. So I'm outside. Okay. So in case when I put this on and lightning shoots out of it, it's not going to set the underside of the ship on fire. Right. Um. I, you know, Charles follows um, unless one of you uh, uh, uh stops him because <laughs> he doesn't really want to let this thing out of his sight. He says. If, if he doesn't get this thing, he's going to come after us. I think he's, he's seen all of us. us. If I put it on, can I go after him first? You, you may be able to find where it is, but like I said, there's no guarantee you'll even be able to take it off. Then I'll cut my damn arm off. It's not, I'm not going to put it on my good one. I mean, we just, we just don't know all that it can do. I mean, I mean, you could, but... I mean, I mean, I mean, let's think. I mean, I mean, maybe we can we can uh, stop the connection somehow, or or if anybody. <laughs> Look, if there was a visible connection, I would be asking someone to try to sever it, but I don't know how. I can't see the connection. I don't know where it's going. And the one who says he can, if that's any truth, then he's not he's not offering up anything. I can't. In. I cannot sever magic. Nobody can sever magic. Nobody, nobody that fate herself can cut the strand short. Then what do we do? Okay, so at that point, um, you know, this thing is vibrating, and you all are like, and you're talking, and it's and it's glowing, and and there's this hum. And you see this woman, um, she's very small. Um, she looks as Inish as Inish can be. She's got red hair in like a French braid and she's got Douglas with her. And she's got this other man who looks like a, a very extremely large Vestin. And she sees all four of you and she says, 
I'm Captain O'Connell. What exactly is happening here? And we will end there for the evening. Oh. Yeah, don't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah, seeing the... Uh, yeah, I'm gonna... I we're gonna walk some planks, for y'all. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I have ideas of what roles I want to make immediately when we get back. <laughs> <laughs> don't we all? Right, well... Um, thank you all, everybody, for tuning in. Tune in for chapter four and and see what happens with this uh, vibrating, glowy uh, uh, bracer. Um, and Why, hello um, there. Yes, and there is going to be a one-shot illuminated page this week. And uh, we will um, be here next Tuesday at 8 o'clock. So... Fair winds and following seas to you all. And we will see you next time. Good night, y'all. Thank you for night. being here. Have a good night. Bye, friends. Bye. Bye.